Right, so I've done that the looks cold. Really good. It, I mean, to be honest, I've not even done anything under my eyes, and it looks like I've got sort of like powder, yes. or a bit like a colour on under here. Yeah. And just a little tip. So you know how you want that feline look? Just yeah. draw a tiny little bit on the top of this um, eyelid, on the very, very corner, but like a triangle shape, so it tapers thinner and thinner, and it's wider on the outside corner. But literally a little bit, and that again. Will I use that, that instead? Yes, perfect. So I'm sure I paint that on there. Just yeah, just paint your brush into the coal. I've actually used this now. Right. Yeah, that's it, and it will just give you that nice wing. Yeah, lovely, and try and pull it up. Pull your eye up. It naturally does it with that shape anyway, doesn't it? Yeah. Because if I use the pencil, it'd just be a, yeah, a round blob. Well, any brush with an angle will draw you a line. So that's why we use angled brushes for contours in your cheeks and for eyeliner and for brows, because they give you that line. I mean, that curl, you, your, your eye actually gets used to it after you do it for a bit. Yeah. Right, so that's the curl. Gorgeous. Nice. And now you need Laura. I've only got this because I've not got any false eyelashes, but I, I, I love this, you know, the, um, but normally I'd put the hairdryer on it for a few seconds and heat it up. Yeah, so basically, yeah, it's like a blow dry for your lashes if you heat it up with, um, with a hairdryer. Do you find that you've picked up, obviously, because you, you know, you're in the entertainment industry, you find that you've picked up loads of makeup artist tips over the years? Because for me, yeah. you, you're really good and confident with what you're doing. Well, when I started on Hollyoaks when I was 17, that's when I got first introduced to put in lighter here, because I used to just put straight across. And of course, it's a Scouse place. Holly Hollyoaks is filmed in Liverpool, and I'm not messing. Like, the Scousers have some of the best makeup. They're like, they're like Essex, really, aren't they? They go for it, like, and Mancunians do, actually, because the difference between London makeup and, say, a Manchester makeup is massive, isn't it? Oh, huge, huge. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's two completely different trends, aren't they? I mean, in London, it's all about you know, really natural, like being able to see your skin, just a lick of mascara. I mean, a smoky eye in London would be a little bit of coal just smudged, smudged in with a brush. Whereas, uh, you know, in the North or in Essex, like you say, it's like lashes, brows, face, yeah. contour, lip liner, lip, like it's, it's everything. And I love, I actually love how they, you know, they have so much fun with the makeup. I'm trying I do. to- I mean, it is, because in London, because I remember when I first moved to London and I started dating this guy, and he was like, much older than me, do you remember Nelly? And he used to say to me, why have you got so much makeup on? I'm like, oh my God, you don't understand. He's like, you've just got like loads on. You're like 21 and you've got like this much makeup on. Well, it's just what, we, what you do, isn't it? If you're from the oh. Northwest or from outside of London, they were like, no, you need to wear a scruffy t-shirt and jeans. I'm like, what are you talking about? I've got to wear a full sequin dress to go out. Like, heels like, everywhere. No. <laughs> I just take that with me anyway. I know, right, okay, so I've just got a basic mascara here. So yes. if you were going to put false lashes on, would you put mascara on as well? So, uh, I rarely wear false lashes. Um, if I was, if I was doing individual lashes, I would put my mascara on first, let it dry, yeah. and then just drop in the individual lashes just to get like a natural finish. And I'd probably just put them on the outside corners. Whereas if I was doing a strip lash, I'd put the strip on first and then I'd put the mascara over so that the lashes blend into the strip. So you're kind of like pushing the two together by mascaring over them. Because I find if I put mascara on first and then a strip lash, there's, a, there's always a separation between the two. Right. And a, another good tip when you're doing your mascara, if you want to build it up, is to put on a coat let it dry and then do another coat. Have you got any particular mascara you love that you always go for? The, literally the best mascara is this Code Beautiful one. Um, it's a really small um, niche brand and it is the only hold one that hold I... It up, hold it up to the camera so people can see it if they know what they're buying. Okay. Code Beautiful. Um, I think it's about 20 quid. 
Uh, you, I'll show you the brush because it's it's quite an unusual brush, but it's designed to like lift and curl the lashes, and it has like little fibres in it, so it also lengthens. And I like a good lash because I'm not wearing falsies and I don't really wear eyeshadow. I need mascara. I need that, otherwise I look lost. So for me, that's it's a really good one. You don't have yeah. to spend ages getting your volume and your length. But I mean, that's, I mean, I, I, I like a quite, I, I love lashes. I, I so love them. Code B -L -M. I think you can get it on the Code Beautiful website. What's a sec? I need to power up. One second. We're losing power in every Gorgeous. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Cassie, what, might make, what mascara is it again? Someone's asking. Uh, Code Beautiful. Code Beautiful. Okay. We'll put all the products into your video somehow. Yeah, we will. Do. You can do that. Okay. Now then, what do we think about cruelty-free? Are most products cruelty-free at the moment? Because surely to yeah, God... Yeah, it's, it's a huge trend at the moment, and it's really great. Um, and, and, you know, you can get cruelty-free vegan products on the high street. Uh, you know, I recently had um, my own uh, vegan collection of makeup with B Makeup, which is super drugs um, range. I did a limited edition collection with them. You might still be able to get a hold of it for... For the next few weeks um but it's great that the high street are doing all these um options for cruelty free for vegan you know and, and, and all those things right okay good um lippy lippy so i always say if you're doing an eye don't do anything too too vampy on your lip um, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have some so something kind of nudie that's gonna i would i would possibly put something with a little bit of pink in just to lift Lift your complexion. Well, what I find is my favourite, and I couldn't find it yesterday because they do sell it in the supermarket here, is an old L'Oreal one. What, what colour is number, it? It's number 235. And it's yeah. literally the same colour peach as my eyes. Oh, right. Nice. Yeah. And it just is seems it... to like work. And I also well, found... Whatever, I'd love to rock a red lip. You look great with a red lip. I, I just I just don't. And it's just, you know, the amount of times I've had a makeup artists do a heavy brow on me and heavy red lips and hair down, and it just doesn't work. But it's about knowing your own, because we can't all follow the same trends, because we, yeah. we look different, don't we? But yeah. there's some standalone things, like a dark eye and a paler lip. It just works, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And it's getting the right tone. So that's why I was saying something with a bit of warmth, like a pinky or peachy, like, as you say, to just like lift your skin a little bit and work really well. Um, you know, it's so hard when people say, oh, what colour lipstick will I suit? You've got to try it, I think. And also, I've found over the years, if I, right, my favourite lip liner ever, I think it's number two, Body Shop. I've not got it here, but I've got the next best thing. And basically, it's like Spice by um, MAC, but it's, it's a, got a bit more of a blue hue to it. So mm. it's a bit more, it's got more of a purple base as opposed to the orange base. And I find that makes my teeth look whiter. The that's blue. Say. Yeah, exactly. If you want something that's going to make your teeth look light, lighter, you need, uh, whiter, sorry, you need to use that, that blue undertone. Anything too warm will make them look more yellow. So going yeah. into the blue undertone if in your pink lipstick or whatever it may be will, will give you a, a brighter smile. So what I've got here, I've got peachy golds and sort of like burgundies on my oh, eyes, which gorgeous. make my eyes go more green, black coal, and now I'm going to use like a sort of a blue base natural kind of like a spice but if i had it with me it would be i think i've actually hang hold fire is this body shot number two i think i found it i think look at that the state of that but me and my mate claire have used body shop number two since we were 14 sneaking out so and it's done me well or has it i don't know but i'm just going to put because i like there's so many makeup artists who say oh no no lip liner is really passe and everything bollocks it keeps your lips your lipstick in place and it just it just makes your lips look better i think if you use yeah, yeah. Lip line, it's funny because colour. some people really sue and need a lip line and you're one of those people my sister's the same i don't wear a lip line i look ridiculous if i put a lip line Do on you? <sighs> My lips, my lips are generally too big. So if I put a lip line on, I just look over, yeah, oh, 
<laughs> oh, woe is me. I just look too overdone. I mean, I'm sat here actually looking at one of my lip lines. I've got one similar to yours. This is a Kiko. But I'll only put this on on a night out. Otherwise, I look silly. So, whilst you write, a lot of people will say lip liners are, you know, are not the best. It really depends on the person. Yeah. You've got to try, haven't you? And do you know what? When you've got companies like Kiko selling decent priced colours and things you can experiment with, you know, it's great, isn't it? Now, is there anything I should put? So I've got, this is the last of this, and I'm going to put it on. So this is number <laughs> 235 L'Oreal. Is the lipstick colour the same as your lip liner? No. It's Maybe much just lighter. it slightly with your finger. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blend it. What I do, when I do a lip line, it's slightly darker because the reason why you do that is because you want your lips to, make, to look bigger. So what you then yeah. need to do is get a brush, like just a clean brush. I'm looking for my lip brush here. Um, oh, someone's just, just said a nice spray of white musk, a.k.a. Nancy's. Oh, my God, white musk body shop. That was for the sophisticated third oh, year, yeah. I remember. I think there was Dewberry as well that everyone stank on. Did you put concealer on your lips as well? No, but I did have a bit of base on from the foundation. Um, yeah, then you you just want to kind of like smudge out the lip line before you put your colour on. Oh, well, I didn't do that. That's so I'm going to kind of blend it with a brush a bit. Yeah, just blending it with the brush a bit, yeah. How long do lipsticks last? It really depends on the lipstick you get. I find that matte ones last a lot longer. If you've got something that's quite satin, it will slip. Um, and that's another tip um, for, uh, you know, women who find that the lipstick kind of seeps into the fine lines of the lips it's because it's too slippy so go for something more matte those liquid lips are great um what else have we got now see i've put that on now what i'll do is because i want to look like lips, i'll do a bit more here of lip liner just so, as if i've got a shadow What colour combo shadow would you see, would you use for brown eyes someone's put? So if you've got really dark brown eyes, I tend to go for either pastels or pops of colour or metallics. Um, so the opposite of your eye of your eye colour will really help make them pop. Sophie, you're right, she does look stunning. Absolutely stunning, Davinia. You know what Sophie says that about like us in really bad situations. You know what she's like? She's such a people pleaser. She's never oh. said anything negative in her life. Uh, we've done the mascara right let's put my hair let's put it down so what do I put it's over not. To what... how's that absolutely gorgeous now then what else do I need I feel like taking you into the daylight so you I was going to put my hair in a plait now just to do something you look at have you got enough mascara on or do you need another coat let's put another coat on while we're here Matthew's going to say, like, what are you doing? It's lockdown, you freak. <laughs> Where are you going? Supermarket. Just do a few videos in the garden. <laughs> Just going. Kate Bush style. I'm definitely going to invest in some of that eyelash gel and see if I can get my eyelashes longer. It's really I also, I also ordered online, I'm waiting for it to arrive, some um, eyelash perming kit. To see if I can, I know, I'm risking my eyesight, but I just I can't. Saw one, of my, uh, one of my artists laminated her own brows with one of those kits the other day. That looks good. Oh my God. I'm going to try it when I'm brave enough. I need to find where to buy one of those kits from. China. Oh. China. I'll just pop over. Just pop over. So like, they're still delivering everything. I mean, it's crazy. Right, okay. I'm... I've not even got a brush. What a scruff that just shows. Oh, I'm glad someone's cleaning the makeup brushes yeah. while this that makes me happy oh that's a good idea any right okay so we said eyelash serum revital lift Tips. how to get started on a healthy lifestyle please to be here because okay right so okay so listen we're all on lockdown so we've got literally no excuse not to have a quick cold shower not because it's it's gonna do anything other than balance your hormones so basically a lot of us are stuck in that insulin so on that insulin trap, i.e. we crave sugar, we feel low, and, and your cortisol's not high enough, so you've not got any voie vu, you know? I've got naturally low cortisol, 
which makes me feel like, you know, I need to have a coffee to get some energy. I needed to have a drink to like go out. So basically I've got quite low cortisol. So having that cold shower activates my cortisol and it would act, even people with high cortisol, it'll activate their cortisol. But then as you calm down, because it's attacking your skin, so your skin, which is linked to the brain, will all of a sudden send out these hormones to say, okay, quick, protect yourself, we're under a shock. Then what your body does when it realizes it's, it's, it's not in a state of life and death, it will pump out nice feeling hormones, which will start balancing all your sugar cravings, all, that, all those cravings for sitting down and feeling slobby, all that sort of rest and digest. Basically, you're hacking your hormones and the fastest way to do that is to shock your body and the safest way to do that and the most productive way for circulation as well is with cold water and it's so how free. How do you do that? Okay, I did a post the other day, which is quite, uh, it shows exactly how to do a hot, cold shower. But if you start off with 10 seconds of cold, so go in with it cold, put it on your face, that'll activate, uh, first of all, it's really good for your skin because it'll just, obviously all the blood will pump to it, but it'll activate your mammalian diving reflex, which is <gasps> that. Yeah. Now, that is really, really good, okay? You need to do that because that's what ancient man used to do. And that's what we're after. We're after that shock factor. Do that for 10 seconds all over your body and then put it back up to hot. Put it back down to cold for another 20 seconds. So oh, you can you do it. You can alternate. And the change in temperature is really good for your circulation. It's really good for your fat as well because your body, it's, it's, not, it's almost like, running on a treadmill you're, you're pumping out all different temperature regulators so, so how basically cold? it's really it's really good for that regulation as well to, to regulate your, your, your fat metabolism and that is the first way i started to get on it because of my hormones were flatlined i felt really low and depressed and i was reaching for comfort food. It's not comfort you're getting, you're just activating your dopamine response. Your dopamine response is that, yeah, that feel good response. And that's what you get with carbohydrates. That's what you get with sugars. But unfortunately, as you get older, like you see kids get hyperactive with sugar, but as you get to like 20 and 30 and 40, you've got so used to so much sugar and carbohydrates that you don't get that response anymore. You're just addicted. It's like the, an alcoholic, you just get tolerant. So, mm. so like when I was drinking, I could drink a bottle of vodka, whereas somebody who wasn't an alcoholic would get the same fun out of half a glass of wine. Mm. So my tolerance had kicked in. It's the same with sugar. It's the same with carbohydrates. So you need to get that off. You need to get off that particular treadmill. The fastest way to do that is hack your own hormones. And you right. can do that with a cold shower. Also, okay. as soon That's as it. I wake up, I'm dead. I know it's dead simple and it's free, but as soon as I wake up, I'm like, okay, well, I've got the kids running around and now I've got these two puppies and everything. But I need to sort of like, I want sugar. I want Weetabix with loads of sugar on and milk. Mm. That's that's what I was brought up on, and that's what my because remember you're teaching your kids these memories now. Yeah. So it, now's a great time to tell your kids there's another way. Um, so that's why they get uh, pancakes, paleo pancakes instead with maple syrup, because that sugar is easily digestible and it won't inflame them and it's not as addictive because it's, it's got no, minerals it's, in it. It's useful. It's useful sugar. It's not, just, it's not just manufactured sugar. So, but what I do is straight away, if I'm craving sugar, I know my body, my brain is after fat because your brain... It, Ignore what the game changers say. That bloody movie drives me mad. It's utter rubbish about needing just plant-based food. No, you don't. You need fat. And your brain does run on fat. It is 75% fat. It's not, it shouldn't be run on carbohydrates because unlike in game changers, we're not all running 145 miles a week. You know, those, the, mm. the ultra runners and everything say, oh, I do well on a vegan diet. Yeah, you can do well on that amount yeah, of carbs. It's running nearly 200 miles a week. I don't even drive that in a week, you know, so that's bollocks. But what I'm saying about the fat, so the MCT oil or the MCT powder that you've got, your brain will soon, you'll soon understand your craving for sugar is in fact, that's what it's after. That is brain fuel. That crosses the blood brain barrier. So you can get that into your brain and switch off that craving for sugar. 
And now I have it with coffee because it, because it, it, it helps me with a bit of stevia as well, because that gives yeah. me the taste as well. Now, stevia will not spike your insulin, because as soon as you spike your insulin, you're not going to be in an intermittent fasted state. Yeah, that won't spike your insulin. Just check the ingredients. Is it just stevia? It's really old, this, so I don't know. I was going off, I was going off memory when I bought this. What, what am I looking for? Any other ingredient apart from stevia? Oh, yeah. Maybe it's not good. Okay, so the best stevia <laughs> I've found is a Scandinavian company called Nix. And they've got these little drops, and they've got them. Don't get the original flavour. Get the vanilla or the, the, uh, the caramel, the caramel flavour. The Can really you... nice coffee. Yeah, kids can have MCT powder, put it in a smoothie, it's really good for them too. And I use honey with, it's, I've been having it in my coffee with a spoonful of this and then thinking, oh, this doesn't taste nice, so I'll just put a squirt of really good well, honey. It's, it's, prob it's probably better, it, that would be better than having, say, a cereal, a croissant, a piece of yeah. toast, because again, the honey will spike your insulin, but it is useful fuel. Your body won't necessarily just store it straight on your hips and your belly. It will, it will utilise it, particularly a good quality raw honey because it's got antibacterial properties in. It's not just the sugar. Honey is a complicated ingredient and it can be really useful. That's what my kids have, you know, they have it on sourdough because I use the sourdough. Because, I mean, if I want to lose weight, I'll cut out sourdough completely. But if you're okay with your weight or you can't live without bread, sourdough is the best one because it is... It's already started the fermentation process, so it's attacked that gluten molecule. I know you're gluten intolerant, aren't you? So yeah. you can't have it at all. So, but what, what I worry about gluten-free products is basically to make them taste nice, they've whacked in a load of yeah. chemicals. And that's why I count chemicals, not calories. I do not count calories. I must have about 3,000 calories a day. Um, I'm losing weight. So with this MCT oil powder, which I've started having in my coffee in the morning, as I say, and to be honest, I have noticed I'm not going for sweet stuff as much as I used to. I've got a real sweet tooth. That's my... Yes, my... you do. I know you. Yeah, that's your thing. You love sweetie sweets, don't you? Not just well, your... Pilots, Fizz Belts, them strawberry gummies, like any sweets, I'm obsessed. But to be fair, I have not been having any even... We had to do a bit of shopping the other day and Chris said, do you want me to get you some uh, matchmakers? You know, the old-fashioned mint matchmakers. That's one of my favourites. Oh, so like, you're like literally stuck in the 80s, aren't you? I'm like still 10. I was like, <laughs> no, I don't want any. And I felt, oh my God, I've never said no to chocolate ever. So well, you, should, you should stop <laughs> buying it for you, the flipping enabler. <laughs> if it's not in the house, you won't have it, you know. But you've now got a barrier that tells you it's your brain was hankering after those hormones to feed it, to drive you, to give you drive, to give you dopamine. And sugar will do that, but obviously you're going to put on weight in the same time as inflame your liver as well. What about this? I bought it on your advice. Can I bring myself to eat it? No, my fridge is full of it. Chris is going mad saying, what, what is that in the fridge? Just eat it. Is that bone broth? I can't see it. It's a bit... Yeah, it's bone broth. Oh, what do okay, do? right. Right, well, what you can do is you can put it in a pan and you can add it to any soup because it's got the nutrition in. So if you want to, if you want to, if you've got like a nice organic vegetable soup, don't, don't mix it with Heinz or anything. Or you can put that as your gravy. So when you have a roast dinner, use that yes. as your gravy. That is really a powerhouse. But what you, but I'm so used to it now. I'll drink it like a cup of soup with salt and pepper in. What's it going to do? Okay, this is brilliant, this stuff. It will heal your gut. So, so many of your cravings come from an unhealthy gut because your gut is linked to your brain. Completely right. linked to your brain. It's your second brain. So if your gut's leaky because you've got like, your gut is like two millimeters thick. Now, if you have things like sugar and gluten, and if you're a dairy intolerant, it will rip holes in your gut. And then that will get in, and then all those toxins get into your bloodstream. It'll also probably kick off an imbalance in your gut, causing things like candida to start thinking for you. Candida is a yeast overgrowth. Basically, all these imbalances in your gut will register in your brain. It'll kick off craving. It'll make you lethargic. It'll make you moody. It'll make you sort of premenstrual. Your gut is where your mood is as well. So the thing with bone broth, it has so many minerals in it 
and so many gut healthy like collagens in it, it will heal your gut. Okay. So you will get, you will, your gut lining is so thin at the moment and you can just build up a tolerance. So as it gets thicker and thicker, if you do happen to have an inflammatory food, you won't have the reaction to have more and more and more. It will help you with your cravings. So that is a safeguard that if you can get into using it all the time, and if you have any savory food, even if you're gonna use like a tomato sauce for the kids' bolognese, chuck that in as well. Right. Wherever there's water, chuck that in. And it heals your gut. So that's the top it of It heals your gut, which stop. remember, will heal your brain. So it'll stop your brain from being so susceptible to sugar cravings. So it will right. help you lose weight. Also, it will help you mitigate picky, 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 because nutritionally, you are way up there. Because yeah. the ancient man survived on it. The whole of Asia survived on it. You can boil rice in it. It won't right. make the rice taste any different, but the rice will take on all the minerals. So if you're going to have rice, <laughs> incidentally, don't have brown rice, have white belt massy rice. See, it's I've listened rice. to all this stuff. Sorry, Jay, I've listened to all this stuff that you, that you say on your Instagram and stuff like that. But for me, because I'm just starting out on this journey, I guess, and... You know, it's so hard to take it all in. And it's like, there's so much you should be doing. And yeah, you know, I'm just okay. trying to... So, right, what I say to you is, you need to mitigate cravings. Yeah. And that starts with put shock in your body. So that means cold shower. Whether you get to do a run or a walk or not, do a cold shower. Balance your hormones. You need to be in charge of your hormones, not the other way around. Because at the moment, you're in an addictive state of uh, dopamine chasing sugar. You know, yeah. and, and, and you have been for years. So basically, it's about making your life as, as comfortable as possible, mitigating those cravings. Right. So basically, you need to have a cold shower in the morning. You get yeah. up, you have a bulletproof coffee. If you can order some stevia from NYX, it's a Scandinavian yeah. company. It's a little bottle. It'll last you months. That's gonna... even better because you will... Get the taste, you will get the taste of like a, a something sweet. You will also get the fat and you will basically mitigate that morning craving for dopamine. Yeah, it is, isn't so it? If you don't like coffee, you can do it with masha, which is uh, the Japanese powder for tea. You can do that as well. If you get a bit jittery with have? either coffee or tea, take some L-theanine. I've got that. I've got all these things. L-theanine is great for coffee in the evening. It'll stop you from, it'll stop you from getting the jitters and stop you from getting insomnia. This is great for anxiety as well. So I have got some of those. I'm, you and Jen must have told me to get them ages ago. Um, but I don't really take, I'm rubbish at taking any form of tablets or vitamins or anything. So you've really got to drill this. I'm like your worst possible person. You've got to drill it into me. So. Okay. So you wake up, you have your shower. Then shower? you have your food, coffee or coffee. masha. Yeah, got that. And then what, you, what don't, do you, do you don't, with don't, you don't eat. You, you just don't, just don't eat. Don't eat because that is full of fat. Get yourself doing something. Train. Go for a walk. Just give your, give your body at least twelve to fifteen hours of digesting because you're still digesting food from last night. Right. And what the trouble is with this eating little and often, basically, it was invented by snack companies like Nestle and Kellogg's. Mm to make us buy more, little and often, six meals a day, isn't good, even if you are insulin resistant. I mean, I just think it is bollocks. I think it is invented to make other people really, really rich. Mm. So the little and often doesn't help your digestive system at all. It takes you ages to digest food. Let your gut rest and digest. If you're constantly stimulating it with, uh, with, with food, you're going to get yourself into... Uh, insulin peak and trough so you're always going to be craving more that's why I love the coffee or the masha or rubos tea and you can whiz it up with it your MCT powder or MCT oil and it will cruise you through till midday okay so I eat lunch at first basically you can do if you want I personally I've been doing because I I've got so much to do with the kids I find eating can make me a little bit tired yeah, well, I've been doing the homeschooling, so I've literally not had time to eat till lunch. You see, exactly. You're not hungry. It's habit. 
Let's break for lunch. Let's break for 11. Let's break for tea. You're and like, that's oh my, why. I didn't even notice. Yeah. That book's a brilliant book. I don't know if you've read it, Atomic Habits by James Clear, but it's basically yeah. just making yourself 1% better every day. So I've been reading that and watching you and I'm thinking like, as you know, I can't run or jog to save my life, but I've downloaded this app and I'm trying to learn to do a 5K, which is a good start because I'm sick of seeing you on that treadmill wishing it was me. Don't. I've got to run the marathon tomorrow like an idiot. I don't you know why I've never to do this. How have you done with your, um, your money raising? I think I've got about eight grand or something, which I think will equate to like something Amazing. like 2,000 tests or something. Amazing, well done. What, really well, I want to show you guys something else. There's this woman who I've just met by chance and she invented these. These are called fasting sticks. Now in this, you have got all sorts of things. You've got coconut oil, which is what MCT oil is really. Coconut, MCT oil is a better quality uh, MCC is a better quality of coconut oil and therefore better for your brain. But this is really handy. This has got blackthorn berry powder and passion fruit powder and some turmeric. Now, these sticks here, they're, they're like oily and you can just, when you're halfway through, say if you don't want to have coffee, you can have one of these and you will take this and the fat will go to your brain and it will help you extend your fast. Now, what she's done, she's a really nice English lady and she's just sent me her book intermittent fasting for beginners now wow. it just shows you all the different types of fasting you can do and all different meals because my favorite diet is the paleo diet yeah it's easy to do and it makes sense to me that we eating manufactured foods it's full of chemicals it's going so to be bad. detrimental to your health and it's going to send you back for more because remember people who put things in boxes and packets are trying to make you buy more so it it, it really does. It, you really are putting money into multinational companies. And that's my that. life, just eating stuff that I can actually grab. That's one of the hardest things for me. Are there any tips that you can, that you can give us for people who do like to grab and eat snacks, like who, who perhaps can't cook everything at home? What, what can we eat if, if that's your problem? I'd always look for anything that says paleo on it. Right. Look for paleo foods. Uh, and... I mean, they're, they're getting more and more popular, but that'll mean they've mitigated grains, they've mitigated inflammatory oils, because a lot of the heart-healthy oils are not heart-healthy. They'll actually kill you, and they'll make you, make you crave for more. Yeah. So basically, a paleo diet would be the first stop for me if I wanted to get lean and, most of all, get out the cravings. Because with paleo diets, you can use maple syrup because it's an ancient ingredient. You can use honey. It's not totally cutting out sugar like a keto diet. Keto diets will make you cut out a lot of fruits as well. Paleo diets don't. It's, but if you want to uh, lose weight fast, go keto. Oh, I thought they were the same thing. No, no. Both of them cut out most grains. I mean, uh, paleo diet, I think you can have quinoa on it as well. But, yeah. um, and you've got paleo breads. They use all the, like almond flour as well. Right. And it's a really, it's a really, it's so, so this, this book is by Amanda Swain. So as I said, she's British, which helps because often if you get the American ones, they only use American products. So this is better because it's like everything we can get in the UK. The lifestyles are so different in, in the UK. Yeah. And what's totally available. different. No, they have far worse ingredients than us in their pre-packet stuff. Seriously, they're, they've got a tougher time. They're far more addicted. But you can see, look at the type 2 diabetes. Look at the obesity in America. I mean, yeah. we're on a fast track way there. Everyone's piling on weight. And, you know, it's metabolic disease left, right and centre. But I definitely recommend intermittent fasting. If you can get 12 hours of intermittent fasting, you're on your way. And that right. includes sleep. So if you stop eating at 10 o'clock, you've only got to wait till 10 o'clock the following morning to have something to eat. Personally, I stress. Yeah, I, I, as soon as I have that coffee in the morning, I can stretch it out. My body's used to it. It's out the habit. It's not because I'm any better. I've just got used to it. And my body's like, I know we're going to eat. We're only going to eat at three o'clock. And if I'm seriously hungry before, which I'm not, I'm normally hangry. And I'm looking for a dopamine fix by feeding myself, which releases more hormones. If I distract myself by doing something else... All of a sudden, that hour's gone, and that craving's gone. It's about really registering, are you, are you hungry? Is the stomach rumbling, or are you just 
after hacking your own hormones. If you so, need to, do it in a cold shower again. If, if you're you serious about it and changing the way you, you think, do it, jump in the shower. So how you were just saying like, you'll not start eating till three and then till 10. Like I finish eating, I mean, we in the North have our tea really early. Um, so I'm finished eating by half six. And then unless I'm gonna be naughty and have chocolate, I won't eat again then. So if I say, for example, I stop eating at 7 p.m., what time should I start eating again the next day? If I were you, so, so seven to seven is 12 hours. I'd wait till half 10. Okay, because I've been waiting till about 12 and like I say, but then having my lunch. Oh, okay, well just try it with the coffee and see how long you can go because your body, your body will tell you, your stomach will tell you if you're hungry. Your okay. brain might tell you otherwise, but don't be a victim to your hormones and right. your social situation to what's stressing you out. Because the reason why you reach for food when you're stressed is because Straight away, when you start digesting food, you release good, feel, feel good hormones. Okay. You're after serotonin. You're after feeling good about yourself. And that is basically, you're hacking, you're actually biohacking. As soon as you start, if you have an argument with Chris, you'll storm to the fridge or the cupboard. Because straight away, your body has learned through years, I'll go there and I'll feel better instantly because you're going to start digesting. And when you digest, you release certain hormones. Mm. Rela rest and digest hormones, serotonin, dopamine, all real positive feeling hormones. But yeah. if you can get over using that food as a fix, before you know it, you, you, you won't crave it anymore because your body has found, it, found another way to adapt. And it, it, that, that's uh, what it would have done. I get when I'm stressed at work, it, uh, so I kind of like eat to put off doing things. Is there yeah. anything like, would you snack on carrot sticks, for example? Um, I'd probably reach for one of them to just extend my fast. Because will you obviously, put the drink on for those? Yeah, of course I will. I'd probably reach for one of these, but I think she's out of stock at the moment. So what I do is I take my powder with me everywhere. And if I'm like near Planet Organic or something, because they sell organic coffee, I'll get a whizzer and I'll make myself a bulletproof coffee. Really? And, if, and, and if it's like after 12 o'clock, I'll have an L-theanine as well so I don't get wired. That's a good idea, isn't it? To just have that coffee there. To just have that. Yeah. Because that's all my brain's after. It's after fuel to deal with the ah, crisis, right. situation. Okay. It's just after, so, you know, it just wants something. That. Just take that with you everywhere. Oh, brilliant. I would I'd just get a little Tupperware of it and put it in your bag. And you know those little Frappuccino things that you whiz yeah. up? Zzz, just take that with you and that blends really easily. Much easier than the oil. Oh, okay then. Right, just, you, I've just remembered, you're going to eat again. You are going to eat again. And this whole thing that, oh, my body will go into starvation mode. Man didn't evolve dying when it got starving. It, it, it didn't start eating its own muscle. It started eating its own fat mm. because that's why we store it. And this thing, like, if you're, going, if you're going to starve yourself, your body will start eating lean muscle. This is rubbish. Evolution wouldn't allow that. Evolution of make you use your fat stores. So once you get into a place where you're burning fat, which is called ketosis, you're going to start losing belly fat. You're going to mm -hmm. start losing fat around your thighs. You're going to start losing your bingo rings because it's 90% diet. It's 90% what you're putting in your body. You can't outrun a fork. No matter how much running I do, it's what I eat. And I eat meat every day. I eat high quality meat every day. I am not at all plant-based. Plant-based, I find you need a lot of digestive enzymes like these because plants have their own protective... I mean, animals run away. Plants can't run away. So they have on their, like on their leaves, on their stalks, on their shoots, they have a lot of chemicals on there um, which inflame our guts. That's why kids often find vegetables hard to eat because they taste sour to them because they're very inflammatory on your gut. That's why I always go for a, plant, a, a, a meat based diet. If you're finding you've got all sorts of intolerances, go carnivore for a week, see what happens. Mm. And I know that's against all the, like, the vegans and everything, but guaranteed you're gonna see a lot of obese vegans soon because the amount of carbohydrates and processed food in, vegan, in the vegan diet, I think a lot of it's marketing because you get a nice green V, uh, green v and it looks like all very healthy, but you've got to really be aware of the marketing of the vegan sort of movement and of the 
protein movement as well. If you're getting your protein from plants, like all these granola bars and everything, hands down, it's going to be carb heavy. Mm. So if you want to lose weight, don't get sucked in by them. Uh, don't get sucked in by the marketing of vegan and the word protein. Well, I had that DNA test years ago that you suggested, which basically told me that I have a really high intolerance to carbs. So mm. I'm really aware that I shouldn't eat them and that, you know, a, a paleo keto, you know, protein diet is much better for me. It's just getting rid of those sugar cravings. The like cravings, and that's all they are. The cravings, they will go. Your life won't be like it forever. You just need to get your gut health, get your gut into a place where it's not send, shooting messages to your brain saying, get us some more sugar, Cassie. We're losing our food source. Because if you've got candida, basically it's a yeast. I mean, we all have candida. Everyone has it because it's, it's an essential yeast and it breaks down things. It breaks down sugars. But if it gets out of control it will send messages to your brain saying we need more food we're, re we're populating we're populating and it will send you craving messages and your body no your brain remembers um sugary uh, sugary brands and it will it's it's locked on it and it's, it's a really insatiable craving i mean i know what it's like to crave it's stuff yeah it's years, it's years of it so you so you need to get your gut under control by doing bone broth you have got a fighting chance of getting that gut repopulated with decent uh, microbes. Also, take Simprove as well. It's a really good probiotic. And because it's Simprove is in a liquid form, it gets to your gut. The tablets don't get to your gut because your stomach identifies it as food and burns it in the acid. Because Simprove is a liquid, it gets through the acid. The body hasn't registered that liquid can't, uh, c c isn't, isn't a danger yet. It's, we've not evolved. It's a, it's a long story, but basically, you need Simprove to get your good bacteria. You need bone broth to to sort out your gut lining. So that and those two things will really, really help you with your cravings. But also, when you do get a craving, you need your bulletproof coffee or your bulletproof matcha or bulletproof herbal oh. tea. Any herbal tea will do. And add a little bit of stevia because we all want, we all want it to taste nice. Yeah. Okay. And they're my three things. Oh, well, that in a cold shower and you're on oh. your way. And anything else. So if you combine those, if you combine those four, you will, like the thing with, with biohacking, two plus two, uh, two, one plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one equals five because you are using all different mechanisms in your body that have so many knock-on effects, all of a sudden, you know, you can, you, you will feel in control again. Yeah, so what about um, this spike mat that I bought on your Ah, uh, yeah, the spike you, mat. Now, that's, yeah. that's an, that, you've not used it yet? Oh my God, Cassie. I've done it. So I want you to use it tonight. <laughs> so I want you to use it tonight before you go to bed. Put it on your bed. The spike mat, again, it's like the cold shower. Because your skin is an organ, remember? Your skin communicates with your brain, which communicates with your endocrine system, which is your hormones. So when you lie on that spike mat, your body goes, shit, we're under attack. And it sends out cortisol, which is honestly that fight or flight. And then when it realizes, your brain will say, hang on, we're okay. It's not, we're not under attack. I feel pain, but it's, we can diet down. We can override it. Mm -hmm. And then it starts sending out all your relaxing hormones. So in a long term, so if you do this over the next couple of weeks, your sleep will get better. You won't get as stressed in situations. So like when we start doing the school run again, which is my trigger, your threshold for stress suddenly becomes a lot higher. And what did trigger you won't trigger you anymore because your body is used to sending out these hormones. Okay. It's really good for insomniacs. It's great for you because you're standing up all the time, yeah. doing makeup and bending over. And if you're on your phone as well, because the pillow goes here. And remember, all, the, all your skin has got little nerve endings in. It's a brilliant way to hack into your hormones without taking tablets, which is just going to put load on your liver. How long would you go on it for? So could you like maybe just listen to a podcast or? Yeah, I, I put Netflix on and put it on. Okay. So you, you actually, your body, first of all, you're like that, ooh, ow, 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 ow. Five minutes, then you're into Netflix, but your body's still hacking itself. It's still doing stuff. While you're distracted, your body isn't like, wants to sleep. 
like Fresh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Or, or, or until you feel like I've had enough because we're all slightly different. You know, your pain threshold might be different to mine. You know, some people like hot showers, some people like cold showers, some people, mm -hmm. you know, are just a bit Goldilocks about it. But yeah. the thing is, you need to hack into your hormones if you want to get control of the cravings because the cravings are hormone driven. Okay. And that's why when we get PMT, we're like that. And if you know you do on your period, fine. You know, just have extra bone broth and have some Corella as well. That's really good. If you're going to have, I mean, I'll do a list of all these, but there's so many things. I think you should just start on what you're doing. Just start on that list because that's really good. And then there was just one, I feel like that's sunk in now after weeks of listening to you and buying all the stuff. Like, I'm still a bit like, oh, what do I do with it all? So I've got my list now. I feel like I know what that, all these things are going to do. Um, and the, uh, the only other question that I had to ask you was, you know, some days you get, like I say, I've downloaded this app. It's, it's actually just um, the NHS back Couch to 5K app. So it teaches you how to build up your jogging so you can do a 5K. My plan is that I would love to go running with my kids because they go with the dad all the time. And I'd love to be able to join in. Um, but what do you do on those days when you just get up and you think, I can't, I'm too tired, I don't want to do it. Like, how do you pull yourself out of that? Okay. So I often find, because I've been doing it for ages, I get the most reward from those days. For yeah. some reason, I have got that feel low hormone pumping around me. And the best way to get rid of it is to, is to move it out. So you'll probably find, and this is just experience, I have to have on music that makes me feel good. Like yeah. it could be the soundtrack to Dirty Dancing. Whatever it is that makes you feel a little bit goosebumpy, put it on and go for a walk. Don't jog, just walk. Because oh. if you're like overfaced at 5K, a jog's going to make you go, fuck that. I don't want to do it. I hate yeah. it. I hate my life and I'm a loser. And you're going to get that internal dialogue for the rest of the day. So guess what? Put your music on, zone out and walk. That's okay. all you need to do. And if you feel like having a jog at the chorus, be dressed for a jog just in case. Before you know it, the, the movement itself is hacking your hormones. And before you know it, you could tap into your dopamine with the music with putting one foot in front of the other. And when you hear the chorus, you could run for two minutes. Mm, yeah. And that could do it, you know? That yeah. could be all you need to send, to, to, to send your day on a different trajectory. But whatever you do, you've got to remember, ancient man always risked the, risked, was, was always like trying to keep themselves safe. So, by, so it goes against your natural ancient man psyche, the primal thinking to go out and run all the time because they were always under the threat of starvation. So your brain telling you you're tired tells you to rest, mm -hmm. stay and rest because we might not eat tomorrow. But we know that's not the case. Our brain, our primal brain hasn't caught up with the amount of the abundance of food we have. That's all it is. It's just your primal brain protecting yourself. So don't worry that you've got it. It doesn't mean you're lazy. It's just mean you've got a very efficient survival instinct. But you need to, in the 21st century, you need to be able to override that, go for a little walk. And if you get a jog in, great. If you don't, you've walked yeah. for 20 minutes, which has activated an awful lot of systems in your body that you weren't aware of. And yeah. it will definitely improve your mood. I hate walking. It does my head in. I have to run by the end of it. I have to do that. But I don't know why. But if you're only walking, it's fine. Because you will have hacked into your brain. You will have mitigated the cravings that will definitely come if you just sit on your sofa yeah. because that's why i run because it mitigates the cravings if mm. i don't if i don't move my body i will put my head in a bag of crisps without a shadow of a doubt yeah yeah and i don't want to feel the cravings i hate cravings i bloody hell i'm an alcoholic i don't like feeling them i don't certainly don't need to feel the cravings for carbohydrates and sugars no mm. thank you very much i've got enough going on so it's all about, for me, mitigating the cravings and that walk will do that. So today I'm gonna, I'll, I will go for a walk before I break my fast. Yeah, I'm always just too busy thinking, oh, I need to get to work, I need to get to work, I need to get to work. And you know, like, oh, well, I haven't got time to do it now, I might do it later, but it's, you have to make time, don't you? Have to get up yeah. hard. Well, if you've got a treadmill and you can go for a 15 minute incline walk. Got the treadmill. There she is. My uh, name. My office homes, my treadmill, which you've made me get on. 
it's great though, you know? And I think, I think in the States, particularly over in Silicon Valley, a lot of people are noticing that their brain, their employees are working better when they're walking at the desk. So they have walking yeah. desks, it increases That's brain function. It definitely, definitely makes you feel a million percent better. But it's it makes just... you think. It makes you think faster as well. Yeah. And in this day and age, everyone's always about like getting your brain thinking much quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's... you know, there's nothing worse than that sluggish behaviour because we weren't meant to be sat down quite so much. It's that beginning cycle of breaking what life was uh, and to tr hopefully make it what your life is. Do you know what I mean? That's Getting why through I that think barrier. the shower is the fastest way there because straight okay. away you're hacking your hormones, you're increasing your circulation to the fatty parts of your body. Make sure you do all your limps here with cold to stimulate them. That'll help you detox and it'll help you drain water as well. Okay. Also, right, another, a, really, a really good thing as well, I, I find, because when, when I was eating inflammatory foods, I was holding a lot of water, particularly around my knees and my ankles and stuff. And Aquaband's really good from Boots. That's a good one to take. They've got a herbal one, and then they've got one that's not herbal that's really good for PMT, okay. water retention. And there's also a great tea called Horsetail Tea. You get a bag this big on Amazon for about six quid. It'll last you for a year. And you just seep it and keep drinking that. Because obviously, when you're overweight, you get a lot of water retention because you're like a big bruise, yeah. you know, yeah. and you want to get yeah. rid of that. As soon as that starts going, you get, and you get rid of that okay. excess water, you can see a difference. You start seeing body shape. So and that horse tail will help with that. Yeah, it's really good diuretic. It, uh, they have it in here in Spain in teas all the time. I just don't see it in Holland and Barrett. Oh, uh, okay. I'll guess I'll, tr I'll try Amazon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They'll, they'll yeah. have it. They'll, they've got a big bag of it like that on Amazon. Okay. I've got it in London. I've not got it. That's a good idea. Thanks, Dee. I You're feel well. so much healthier now. Well, I mean, just remember, your hormones have been driving you for years. So just know that you're going to hack your hormones and the cravings will go. It's about mitigating the cravings. Then you're not on a diet because you don't yeah. want it. If you're on you a diet, you're craving something. That's shit. Yeah. I don't want to crave anything. I yeah. hate craving it. Honestly. It's the feeling in the world. Since I've been taking it, doing that bulletproof coffee with the MCT, I, my cravings have like massively gone. I'm like, I don't want to eat that. No, I'm not, not going to have that. It's un, unknowing to me. It's just changed. It's weird. Because your brain, your brain does run on fat, not carbs, you know. It, it can run on certain carbs, but straight away, if you, if, you, if you have like a complex carb, a decent carb, I won't get too technical, but if you're putting a sugar carb in there, because sugar is a carb, it'll spike it and then it'll drop down. So that's why you never, once you have two biscuits and you know that the biscuits are in the kitchen, mm. you'll always go back. Yeah, yeah. Because you've dropped your insulin again. Yeah. And then you become insulin resistant and then you become type two diabetic and then you lose your legs. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a flipping oh. really, it's a really slippery slope. But because it's not instant death, it's a very, very slow death, obesity and diabetes. And that's yeah. why, you know, it, it needs to be arrested now. Yeah. And what they don't tell you, what doctors won't tell you, is it is hormone driven and there are ways to mitigate it. But the NHS guidelines haven't caught up yet. I mean, I think the yeah. World Health Organization, who we're all listening to at the moment, are still suggesting we have margarine. What the hell? That yeah. gives you heart, that, that weakens your immune system. And it's just crazy, you know? This is the thing when you're surrounded by so much information, it's. That's it's really why overwhelming. Like, that's why I like biohackers because they're ahead of it because yeah. they've, they've, they've experimented on themselves. And also they're not waiting for the World Health Organization to run studies and human trials. Because yeah. in 25 years, in 25 years, I could, could have still been obese. And in fact, I could have been diabetic and I wouldn't yeah. be able to run around with my kids. And I wouldn't yeah. be able to run a marathon tomorrow if I'd have listened to what my doctor said. I know, <laughs> what a dickhead. Oh my God. I am really nervous. What time are you doing it? I'm just going to get up and just, I'm going to get up and have a bulletproof coffee and I'm just going to go for it. With no food or anything? No, 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 no. If I run on food, I'll end up having to go to the toilet half How many food. miles? It's 26.2. Oh, dear. So, so that's how we if, I, if I run at 10 kilometers an hour, that's four and a half hours solid running and I will not need to refuel until I'm about, I'd say, 20 kilometers in. So I'm So what will in. you do then that's to refuel? How much, that's how much stored energy you have. You do not need to go. Before you go to a gym, don't be getting pre-workouts. 
it's a waste of your money. It's a waste of your digestive system. It's a waste of fuel on your brain. You mm. need to be walking and running in a fasted state. That's when you right. get the results. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm still going to have calories because I've got my MCT coffee. I'll yeah. have that. And then halfway through, I will probably have, I'll have a big jug of um, chia water, you know, with those chia seeds. Yeah, so I like bought jelly. that as well. That will rehydrate you. But I'm also going to have watermelon because it's got all the magnesium in so I won't get cramps. And that's right. all I need to run a bloody marathon. It's not an ultra. It's not an ultra. It's just a marathon and I'm not sprinting. I'm not Mo Farrow. Do you see how much he fuels when he, when he runs? Zero. Mm. You know, we've got all the things in. Oh, before I go to the gym, I've got to have a pre-workout, a post-workout. It'll just sit in your gut and it's just going to be, yeah. you know, it's just going to be hassle on your brain. We've got well, to understand that we're not only athletes. We don't You're need that much inspiration, D. Oh, thanks, babe. Right, so I will get this edited and I'll put it back up and we can talk and we can talk and everyone can go through all the makeup you mentioned and everything. I've had a lovely day with you. I'm Aww. gonna go and take some selfies outside. It's <laughs> nice to see you. You too. I've got my legs. You too. Right, okay, babe. Go and have a go. I'll see you soon. And thanks to everyone who joined us. And I hope you enjoyed it all. And um here I am, all glad. Yeah, thanks I'm everyone dressed up for and nowhere to go. Join us. Davinia, you look beautiful. Go and take some selfies and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.